Welcome everyone, it's a night for lots of action inside La Hala. Rodolfo Roma in for Max Bretos, joining alongside the MMA godfather of training. Mr. Martin Rooney will be helping me out tonight. We got a stellar fight card ready for you this evening. Lots of action, mucho más acción on this Mexican Independence Day. Just yesterday it was also Central America's Independence Day. So lots of celebrations. But all the celebration we'll be doing with all the fireworks inside La Jaula. In just a few we get to, to introduce to you both prelim fighters coming in. But we got a great main card lined up for you featuring Jose Ferreira from Chile, who comes in undefeated, taking on Patrick Lehan from Ireland. The ladies, Claudia Zamora, who returns to La Jaula since she made her professional debut here in Combate Global, taking on the veteran Elizabeth Phillips. And then to wrap it up, our main event, Venezuela's Adir Terry, taking on Mexico's Miguel Gonzalez. Definitely setting it up for a great evening, but up first, to kick off the evening, Felipe Diaz taking on Mexico's Alan Cantu. Both these men are warriors with lots of heavy hands as we get excited in this bout at 135 pounds. We go to Luper Contreras for the introduction. Entrando a la jaula, Felipe Diaz. Felipe Diaz making his way to La Jaula. Had a competition recently back in July. Nickname El Loco, or the crazy, <laughs> uh, coming in here. Uh, a man who uh, trains out of the American Combat Gym in South Florida. He's a brutal striker, he says. Uh, Martin Shirley to deliver here and uh, has a background in kickboxing and a blue belt in jiu-jitsu. Yeah, I think it's going to be, uh, he's got his hands full tonight though with uh, Alan Cantu. It's going to be a very difficult fight. As we get ready for the introduction to Alan Cantu. Su contrario, Alan Cantu. Alan Cantu is a familiar face we've seen compete inside La Jaula, has five knockouts, training out of the MMA lab, which is home to Benson Henderson. Has a uh, quite an interesting story with his motorcycle adventures, but Martin, this is a guy who has phenomenal striking, resilient. He's a pressured pilot. He likes to pressure his opponent. He's gonna bring everything tonight. Yeah, I've seen him fight before. I've watched him run over a couple of guys here at Combate Global. And I know this guy is gonna bring the heat. He's gonna to wanna to keep it on the feet. And uh, man, he's ready to rock. As we take a look at the head-to-head, -head, la cara a cara. Diaz 31 compared to Cantu's 28 years of age. The height, not much of a difference there. 5'7 for Diaz, 5'6 for Cantu, the reach. The advantage goes to Felipe Diaz at 71, 64 to count two, and the weight there pretty much fairly even as we get ready for the official introduction. Luper Contreras! Este duelo, tres vueltas, división peso gallo, this bout, three rounds in the Bantam weight division. Los jueces son, the judges are Mark Streisand, Dorian Mirasola, y James Lazaro. Presentando la esquina azul, presenting the blue corner. Vestido de rojo, wearing red. Sobre la báscula, marcó un peso oficial de 135 libras y media on the scale. He registered an official 135 and one half pounds. En su sexto combate dentro de la jaula, con tres victorias y dos derrotas, he enters la jaula for the sixth time as a pro, with three victories against two losses. Representando a Santiago de Chile, Felipe El Loco Díaz. Su opponent in the esquina roja, vestido del tricolor mexicano, verde, blanco y rojo. His opponent in the red corner, wearing the colors of Mexico, green, white, and red. Su peso oficial, 135 libras y media. His official weight, 135 and one half pounds. En 18 combates, mantiene un record de 10 victorias y 8 derrotas. In 18 pro bouts, he maintains a record of 10 victories against 8 losses. Entrenando en Phoenix, Arizona. Y puro Monterrey, Nuevo León, México. Alan Beche Cantú. El referee, Alan Abeles. Police, Alan, police. All right, 
right, I gave you the instructions in the locker room. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. If you want to touch him up, go ahead. Come out, fight. Back up. Back up. Alana Bellis, the third man in La Jaula. Felipe Diaz representing Chile. Fight, are you ready? On the con Fight, opposite ready? side. Fight. Alan Cantu out of Mexico as we get this bout underway. Our first of the evening. Leading up to tonight's main event, Adir Terry versus Miguel Gonzalez. And next week, La Lova versus Sally Man. Don't want to miss it. Juliana Pena will be joining us. Former world champion, Martin. Diaz trying to take the center of the ring right now, but obviously Contu very active. Already landed a kick. A couple of strikes to welcome the Chilean back to La Jaula. Strong kick to get it off here from Felipe from Chile. Who is a uh, civil engineer, has that black belt background and kickboxing and when you talk about black belts right well, people always think it's karate or jiu-jitsu but in other countries especially in south america kickboxing they, they give belts yeah. for the discipline well very difficult to sometimes quantify what those belts mean but right now diaz has landed a big kick but he's also eaten some leather from contu too both fighters still getting their range right now but the reach advantage definitely to Diaz. So Contu's gonna have to get inside, throw that big left like he's trying. Whoop, there's a little something there. Great action for these guys to kick it off. They're feeling out, testing each other out with that striking game. But yeah, Diaz has, has been very successful with that jab, and he's landing some shots right there too. Contu, when he's not training, he loves to jump on his Harley Davidson. <laughs> And right around, the oh, longest well, drive was 14 hours. Well, hopefully he's not going to be on the run tonight because he has been pressing the action, but definitely he's got to get inside to land. And each time Diaz comes in can be very dangerous for him, like we almost saw right there. Yeah, Cantu throwing in that right hand, quite heavy. Felipe with the jab. Great combination though from Cantu, that one and then the low kick, Martin. And you can see Kantu is really looking for that left hand. Definitely a height differential here, too. That one oh. inch, that one inch makes a big difference. And you can see there where Felipe is standing up a taller fighter. Another solid kick by Diaz. And for anybody watching, when you hear those at home, that's like taking a baseball bat across the thighs. There's nothing fun about it. Felipe's corner telling him to throw it, throw it. Let them hands go. Stop being patient. But Martin, they're, 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 it's, it's very different when you're in the, the corner, man. You've cornered many <laughs> fighters, killing Jim Miller, yeah. a veteran of the sport. Uh, it's easier said than done. Yeah, when you're a cornerman, you can be yelling all you want. Right now, those guys are in there, focused, tunnel vision. They don't hear much. Jim in particular says, man, he never hears anything we're saying, even though we're screaming with veins in our neck. But man, I'll tell you, Contu is, Contu's close with that left each time. Diaz is gonna have to be careful. Last time we saw Contu in action was in May. He got a TKO victory over Pierre Daguzan. In 2021, he was very active. He competed on three occasions, going one and two, taking on the likes of Ricky Bandejas, David Martinez, and got that victory over Ernesto Ibarra back in May of 2021. Great hand there, yeah, left hand. Again, he is just looking for it. Diaz, oh, there it is. You know, Contu has found a home with that left hand on Diaz's chin, and he's gonna have to be careful. Great jab, but I've seen from Diaz though, he was more of the, the pressured fighter. He was moving in more, but now he's backing up a little bit, huh? Well, you take a couple of shots to the chops like that, <laughs> that'll back you up. But definitely, hey, he's not backing down right here. That jab, we got each guy landing lefts like popcorn right now. Diaz last competed in July of 2021. It was a defeat, however, Trickle, he has not, he has trickle not of stopped. blood right now coming down on the left eye of, of Diaz. Diaz. Diaz, though, he hasn't been active in MMA, but he's been active in the stand-up, taking on a couple of kickboxing bouts in his home country. In fact, he won the national WACO title, pro title, in Chile. Well, I'll tell you what, right now Diaz is showing me he's got a tough chin. 
because Kantu has landed on it over and over successfully. He said he likes the fight game of veteran and future Hall of Famer Jose Aldo along with Uriah Faber. Same intensity there, great exchange there, but Kantu. I'm sure the pace will be picked up as we come back with the second round of his opening bout. Great action to kick off the evening, Martin, between Cantu and Diaz from Chile. Yeah, I, I would give the edge right there to Cantu just on the more significant strikes, but both men landed and a really tough round to call, but I would say that uh, Cantu is getting his range. Boom, with that left right there, over and over. But he's got to get inside to get it, and you see how, as long as Diaz is backpedaling, tough to do. Yeah, I've never seen that he put his elbow up to cover instead of putting his fist up to the guard, huh? But right. Seconds out! Seconds out! Now we're ready for the second round between Chile's Felipe Diaz taking on Mexico's Alan Cantu. This is uh, just a few, we'll get that open scoring so we'll know who is up ahead in this bout, Martin. And we've had this conversation with several fighters if they are told if they are winning or losing. And that's, that's a motivation itself. You know, if you're in the second round, you're down to fight, you're coming into the, la the third round, you gotta push the pace and go for that KO or submission victory. Oh, without a doubt, I think the open scoring is a, a fantastic idea, something I've talked about for a long time where, hey, then you know what's going on in every other sport, you know the score of the game, right? So right now, again though, Great body I'm watching. Shot from Kantu. Yeah, Kantu is landing, he loves to strike. I don't think we're gonna see these guys go into the ground today. Yeah, I don't see any likes of that. Felipe Diaz, it's great, great exchange. Uh, these guys are both throwing extremely hard with bad intentions, right? Oh, Diaz has had much success, though, with that left jab. Yeah, both guys' left hands are going to be hurting tomorrow, no matter what. <laughs> Cantu already bleeding just a bit there on the nose area, and Diaz was bleeding underneath the uh, left eye. Yeah, both guys are chipped up right now, and, and rightly so. For anybody that wants to ever step in there, you take a few shots to the face, uh, this isn't the movies, right? Like, this is the real deal. Well, when you get oh. hit, stuff happens. And that's the open scoring. You're seeing it there, Martin. First round, Vance goes to Cantu. Your yeah, thoughts so, on that score? Yeah, so that's how I saw it. I saw Cantu taking it, but like I said, it was so close that, yeah, it's not a coincidence that one of the judges saw it for Diaz. But man, both guys landing right now. Now, do you, do you flip the switch here and take your opponent off guard and Go for a takedown. Uh, if, if they were super comfortable there, but I don't think that is the strategy either guy feels most comfortable with. Right now, obviously, Diaz is there to strike, being in the kickboxing background, and having watched so many of Kantu's fights, Kantu loves to throw the leather too, just like that. Yeah, once he finds that gap, he's just so quick to connect those combinations at one, two. Diaz reading his opponent. Very patient. Yeah, I, th I think Diaz looks the fresher of the two fighters right now. But Kantu, again, not backing down, but you see how he has to, yeah. he's got to penetrate every time to get close enough to throw that punch. And, and I would say that Diaz is more the flashy guy. He's just ready to strike that even when gestured a flying knee, but he held back. Well, right now, again, if you're gonna, if you're, if you're gonna fight a kickboxer in kickboxing, you gotta be wearing. I think those jabs are starting to, take some steam out of Kantu. Right, because Kantu is coming in, but every time, every time he comes into that pocket, he gets met with a cross. Oh, yeah, and when you All right. bring that weight in and take a jab in the face, Ooh, you're doubling right its power. But, man, continuing to throw. Yeah, Diaz, look, Diaz looks a lot fresher here, warming up with that right hand to meet. Although he, did, he got a little whiplash out of that one. <laughs> oh, both guys, you know, really going after it. I, I, I really have respect for this where neither guy taking a break, each guy continuing to throw, which 
I think the people that have the hardest job tonight will be the judges. It's a tough one as we're getting now to a minute and a half in this second round. Several appearances from Alan Cantu, eight to be exact. Cantu's starting to get on that motorcycle a little bit though, and he's, he's, <laughs> he's backpedaling a little. And uh, again, Diaz, Diaz starting to take control of the center. Diaz said, listen, I, I want to get back on that winning column. I know what I have to do. I have a good strategy. And uh, so far in this round, I, I think he's, he's a lot more impressive than that opening one. Yeah, well, I, you know, Kantu was a little fresher, landed a lot of big lefts, and you haven't seen that in this round, where with 45 seconds to go, I'm giving this round to Diaz. Now, do you think, Martin, when I'm looking at Kantu, it's more like he's, he's like throwing like a bait, putting his head out front. Well, it's, again, he's at a disadvantage in the reach. He's got to come in to, to land. But in order to come in, you got to get through those strikes. Of course, the height there, you see the difference, but that lead leg from Diaz is there as well, Martin. Should you, should Kantu maybe kick that lead leg a little bit in the uh, inside to bring him down? Either fighter right now, I think they've both forgotten they have legs, and they are just, <laughs> and they are just throwing punches with everything they've got. All right, as we finalize this second chapter of this bout, we get ready for our last round between Diaz and Cantu. There we have it, Cantu, a bloodied man, sitting down on that stool, getting fixed up a bit. Yeah, as he get ready for the next round. I definitely, you know, you can see it right there. That nose, uh, pretty damaged, and uh, his spirit as well, because look at this, just eating shots in that round. And uh, without a doubt, Diaz took control of the fight right here, where now as we go into round three, it's anybody's game. Great kickboxing from Diaz. You could just see it right there. I love how he transitioned from the jab to the hook, perfectly executed from the Chilean as we get ready for the last round of Diaz and Cantu. Two men walking into the last round, bloodied. They know what's at stake. Lots of respect between these two guys going at it. Oh, these guys have these guys have both put out a lot of energy right there. Both taking some significant strikes, and whoever does more here is going to win this fight. Let's yeah. see who wants it. Interesting to see what's going to happen. What the judges decided in that second round. Again, this have we do have open scoring. We'll get the heads up. As far as who is ahead, first round going to Cantu. Man, and Diaz, Diaz just continues to land those really hard strikes. It was the kind of strikes that Cantu was landing in the beginning. And I'll tell you what, though, right now, if the momentum continues to go this way, we could see Diaz taking it home. I, I, I question, though, that guard that Cantu has by positioning his elbows up, because he does leave that rib area open. Yeah, but right now, all the damage is happening on the face. Now, there you go. Now, say, hey, if Kantu yeah. can continue to put combinations together like that, it's it's going to be who's more active right now. And, and, there, and it could get very right interesting. There. Yeah, if somebody goes to a ground, gets look a little the, takedown. Look at the open scrum right here, Martin. Yeah, so right now, Diaz's fight, but super close. Very close fight, very close fight We're here. It's gonna take these two guys to bring a lot to impress the judges. Who wants it the most? We got three minutes and a half to prove it. And like you said before, Rodolfo, an interesting strategy. Imagine somebody lands a takedown, can continue to keep somebody down, ground and pound them some. You could, you could win the round like that, but I really don't think that's gonna happen right here. Now these guys are, are destined to be just take this fight and just strike all the way, all 15 minutes of the fight. Yeah, and Diaz's strikes right now, they've got more sting on them. And uh, man, Cantu's got to do a little bit of what he did in that first round. C Cantu almost seems just a little puzzled. You know, he's just, he's, it seems like he's doing the same thing, but he's just not connecting. He has to be maybe a, a little bit more well, surprise the, him a bit maybe well, well the difficulty is new. when you come in with a game plan well you know the old saying everybody's got a game plan until they get hit in the face and uh it's hard to make that change or the adjustment right now and uh 
Man, Diaz continues to tee off. Obviously, that explosive is gone. That explosiveness is gone yeah. from Cantu. Diaz seems more confident leading into this last round. But these guys have, hey, we're almost at 15 minutes in La Jaula. And for everybody to understand just the stamina that takes, and that's, that's with getting hit, punched, and taking abuse. It's almost incredible. That's why I call these guys some of the greatest athletes in the world. You mentioned about that training that goes into the fights. Great combination from Diaz. He's been doing that all day. Right, Diaz continuing to land. This fight is slowly slipping out of the hands of Kantu. You talk about that training, Martin, and there's no doubt that cardio, we we're just having a conversation, that cardio, you know, that endurance, that, that, that's what fading's about. No, no necessity to be lifting a whole ton of weights. And I remember my coaches just tell me, hey, forget the weights, just technique, technique, and go run. Uh, I, you know, <laughs> I'm still a big fan of the weights, though, too, and if you look at Diaz right here, he looks the bigger fighter, the stronger fighter, and you see each strike, even that Ooh. kick before, when he lands it, you see how Kantu nice right landed. Hand, yeah. He got that hook. Kantu got that hook. He snuck it in. But then he ate that jam for it, too. And they got a minute to go. Felipe yeah. Diaz. Yeah, one minute. This is where you get an opportunity to show the judges the final stuff. Finish with strength. And he's starting to land that kick now a little bit, too, which was there all night, like you said. Diaz hit that accelerator, though, there for that short minute. They got some great combinations. And Diaz deciding to get on his horse, move around a little bit, frustrate Contu more. Right, but you can move around a lot, but are you gonna impress the judges? You gotta do something with it. Well, I think I think he's done enough to win this round. I think he's 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 fighting, you know, a conservative fight right here, but he's continuing to land with 30 seconds left. Something big has to happen for Contu. If he wants to get that victory. The clock is ticking. And he's trying to work the body and maybe land. Still throwing, no, though. Still throwing. Nobody giving up here in La Jaula. Defending himself, trying to land something to take this one home. Man, what a great fight to open up this show. Each man gave everything they had, leaving bloodied. And, man, I, I am intrigued on yep. what's going to happen with the judges. I'm intrigued myself. We're about to find out who the winner is, Cantu or Diaz. Coming up next, the result. Bueno, mi nombre es Jose Ferreira. Tengo 24 años y vengo del sur de Chile, de Temuco. My name is Patrick Delich Lahan. I'm 23 years old. I'm from Cork City, Ireland. Bueno, mi pelea de esta noche es contra Patrick Lahan, eh, un luchador de Irlanda. Eh, lo encuentro un peleador completo. Tiene muy buena striker, pero a mí no me supera en ninguna cualidad física. Así que por ende, yo creo que lo voy a llevar a mi terreno, que va a ser el suelo y la pelea va a terminar por el gran empate. My new opponent, he's from Chile. Uh, he's a, like he's a good, aggressive striker. It's going to be a fun fight. He's got he's got good grappling. He's a proper belt. I'm a proper belt, so it'll be even enough there. Mira, la verdad es Patrick está rankeado número tres. Imagínate, que ganarle al rankeado número tres y quedar al tiro tres. Eh, qué mejor. No, man, I don't feel any pressure at all about being number three. Um, like, I want to be champion, so if I can't handle number three pressure, what's, what's it going to be like when I'm champion, you know what I mean? So it's just numbers, like, every fight is different, and, and you go in there, just, you have to fight someone, there's, like, that's all you have to worry about. Bueno, a Patrick le quiero mandar el mensaje que espero que se haya preparado bien, porque yo me preparé como siempre. I'm here to get my money and bring it home to my family, so get out of my way, I suppose. We are back, Contu Diaz putting the bow on this opening bout of tonight's fight card. Felipe Diaz out of Chile, Chile, and Alan Cantu out of Mexico as we go to the final result. Who takes the victory? To La Voice, Lupe Contreras with the result.
Después de tres vueltas de mucha más acción, el juez Lázaro anotó 30 a 27. After three rounds of much more action, Judge Lázaro scores it 30 to 27. Y los jueces Streisand y Mirasola anotaron 29 a 28. Judges Streisand y Mirasola scored about 29 to 28. All in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. Los tres a favor del vencedor por decisión unánime. El loco. Felipe Diaz. Well, there's nothing crazy about that victory. El loco Felipe Diaz taking home a W back in the winning column, defeating Mexico's Alan Cantu. That's a happy man. Congratulations to this young man. Enter La Jara for the first time as we get ready for our next bout coming up next. Great stuff, Martin, to open up tonight's fight card as we take a look back at Felipe Diaz taking on Alan Cantu. Diaz taking on the victory, Martin. Well, Diaz showed he had a chin of stone in that first round and then just started to wear Cantu down and round by round started to be aggressive like that, continue to back him up with strikes. And uh, man, he stole that one away. But you got to hand it to Kantu, too. Man gave everything he had. And according to the judges' scores, hey, they had him winning some of that, too. Two bloodied souls. Much respect. But the victory goes to Felipe Diaz. Our next prelim will surely deliver Fernando Calvo. Fernando Calvo taking on Jose Diaz coming up next. Of course, we're all excited about next week's main event. La Loba taking on Mariel Seliman La Araña. It's La Loba versus The Spider next week. But before we get there, we got an amazing fight card here this evening. In our prelims, they always deliver. And our next bout is Jose Diaz. Suavecito taking on Fernando Calvo out of Spain. These two dudes were surely delivered. Diaz making his debut inside La Jaula. Calvo returning to La Jaula. Spain, we've seen a lot of men and women from Spain competing, especially, actually, you can check out the reality show Combate Global Exclusivo on VIX Plus, where several camps are in action. But enough of that, let's get to Lupe Contreras with the official introduction. Entrando a la jaula, José Díaz. José Suavecito Díaz coming in la jaula. This young man has a lot of experience. Nine and five record, Martin. Nine and five with five submissions, three knockouts. This guy does not go to decisions, fighting out of Huntington Beach, which is a famous area for Chris Cyborg, Tito Ortiz, who has tra trained with him at Claybor Gym. And uh, I'll tell you this, he, in the experience category, he's got way more than the Spaniard he's about to fight. And uh, I'll tell you what, another interesting thing on his resume, he's the guy that retired a fighter I used to really admire, Caro Parisian. Wow, look how exciting. That's some historical facts in the world of MMA as we get ready to introduce his opponent, Fernando Calvo. Su oponente, Fernando Calvo. Fernando Calvo out of Spain, training with the team of Docodo, alongside uh, Tino Gilarans, who we've seen compete here in La Jaula. Last time we saw that guy, that guy was just amazing, a man who is very confident in his striking. Coming off of a loss, a defeat here in La Jaula, but wants to get back in that winning column. Calvo, this guy, this guy is just jacked and he's ready for action. Yeah, he's, he's got a lot of muscle on that frame. He's got three knockouts to his credit, but I'll tell you what, in terms of if I was his coach, 
He does not want to have his back on the mat. He does not want to have Suavecito anywhere <laughs> around his neck or his elbows. And uh, I have a feeling uh, that may be exactly what we see tonight. As we get ready to our head-to-head, -head, La Cara a Cara, Jose Diaz 32, Calvo 26, the younger of the two. The height equal, six feet. The reach, 70 inches compared to Diaz to Calvo 72. And the weight, just a little slightly off there from Calvo coming in at 170.8 pounds compared to 169 to Jose Diaz. As we go to Lupe Contreras for the official introduction. Este duelo, tres vueltas, división peso welter. This bout three rounds in the welterweight division. Los jueces son, the judges are Lorenzo Toledo, Mark Streisand, y Dorian Mirasola. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un... Combate Global. Presentando la esquina azul, vestido de azul, presenting the blue corner, wearing blue. Sobre la báscula, marcó un peso oficial de 169 libras on the scale. He registered the official 169 pounds. En 14 combates, mantiene un récord de 9 victorias y 5 derrotas in 14 bouts as a professional. He maintains a record of 9 victories against 5 losses. Fighting out of Huntington Beach, California. Jose Suavecito Diaz. En la esquina opuesta, vestido de amarillo, in the opposite corner, wearing yellow, su peso oficial, 170 libras y tres cuartos, he weighed in officially at 170 and three quarter pounds. Entra por octava ocasión a la jaula, con cinco victorias y dos derrotas. He enters la jaula for the eighth time as a pro, with five victories against two losses. De Madrid, España, Fernando, el bicho calvo. El referee internacional, Raúl Porrata. Al centro, al centro. Obey my commands at all times, protect yourself at all times. Obedezcan mis órdenes y protesten en todos momentos. Toquen guantes, touch gloves, back to your corners. As Mike likes to call Raúl Porrata, el bigote. Raúl Porrata, the international referee. Ready, the ready. The third man Acción. in La Jaula, Calvo. And Mr. Suavecito going at it. Toto to already, Martin. He's Suavecito. There's nothing suave or soft about Diaz. He's coming in swinging. Oh, Diaz, Diaz is, is pressing the pace, and he is welcoming the Spaniard back to La Jaula. Oh. Man, oh, man. Diaz might finish this off real quickly, Martin. Well, the leather is popping, but Calvo not backing down. Diaz better be careful. Put those hands up. Calvo working the body to slow down the pace of Diaz. Diaz came right from the start like a bat out of hell. Yeah, he was trying to run a 40-yard dash on the Spaniard's <laughs> face. But as they say it, right, it's not a, it's not a marathon. What is it? <laughs> it's not a marathon. Well, no, it's, it's not, it's not a, a sprint. Yeah. That is marathon. <laughs> yeah, well, right now, they came out sprinting. Now they've slowed down into the pace. But I'll tell you what, actually, Calvo now taking a little control in the center with some of those strikes. That kick kind of slowed Diaz down a little bit. Diaz already bruised up under the left eye. Calvo now, now he was the one that slowed down the pace and told Diaz, hey, whoa, calm down, man. We still got more time in this fight. Yeah, I'm surprised that this is not the strategy that I, I would have expected, where Diaz is just throwing leather, but where I would have thought, hey, we're going to see a take, set that up with a takedown, and we have not seen that tonight. Now, is that detrimental to Diaz? Because uh, he could gas out. It seemed like he just went everything, threw everything right from the start. Yeah, he, there's definitely there's definitely been an energy change between the two fighters, but I'm just surprised he hasn't used one of those strikes to get inside, tie him up, and show the Spaniard what the ground game is all about. He has started com his combat sports training back with boxing and wrestling as a young man, training with the Clever Gym. As you mentioned, he is a Huntington Beach home to the Tito Ortizes, the Chris Cyborgs. Yeah, a lot of a lot of wild striking though right now, and Diaz is, uh, you know, if anything, mouth is a little open right now. Where I'm, I'm expecting to see a clinch real soon. It's seeing here that 
you know, over and over, we've seen many men and women compete in Sala Hala for Spain, and they just evolve over time. You can see here the improvement from Calvo, who's taking on a, a more experience in Jose Diaz. Well, D Diaz is kind of playing into Calvo's game. I mean, Calvo, Calvo with his all the striking background is getting the pleasure of a striking match where I'm sure it's a surprise for him too. But I'll tell you what, these guys are throwing so hard. Somebody's, somebody's going to get taken out. Calvo has a purple belt in karate. He's very confident in his striking. Started karate back when he was five years old. He also dabbled a bit into soccer. And when he's not doing any martial arts training, he likes to get on his motorcycle and drive. Well, here's our first clinch right here. I'd be interested to see if Diaz can turn Calvo, put his back to the cage, and uh, maybe get a little takedown right here. He's got the underhook, yeah, but he's deciding to stay on his feet. Diaz, who has a, uh, a wonderful story. He has taken, been taking care of his brother and sister. They were very young. They're in the early teens. Mom passed away, and he was the one that stepped in to be that father figure. Diaz right now has eaten some body shots. We're almost at a minute left in this round. And I'll tell you what, Calvo has been uh, seeing off a little bit, but man, both guys not backing down. Yeah, Diaz, Diaz is not the same. He's coming in a little winded here. You, you have to question how much of that energy that he spent right from the start. Is that, is that damage his game time? Is that damage his entire fighting time? Oh. I mean, they're just swinging right now. Right now, just <laughs> both guys. They're just going at it. I hope they know that this is a three-round fight. <laughs> but I'll tell you what. They, I guess they want to go home early. <laughs> yeah, both guys, though, given everything, 30 seconds left. Calvo seems to be the more patient of the two, but right here, again, this would be an opportunity to spin Calvo around, maybe get a takedown to influence the judges a little, but I don't know. Oh, Calvo going for it. But that, again, we've seen many men and women compete in the Hall of Fame. They've improved. You see it here with the striking and, of course, with takedown defense. And we'll see what both these men can deliver in the next round as we come up next in the second chapter. Jose Diaz taking a little breather. Yeah, very yep. difficult round to call right there. You can see Calvo's got, he's got some scrapes going. I think, uh, man, very difficult if I was a judge right there. I think, again, you're gonna see, man, Diaz came out hard, big body kick right there. Came out throwing all guns at the ready. But uh, slowly but surely, Calvo not backing down, staying very focused and also throwing big strikes where I don't know which one was more significant, but man, Calvo shaking off another kick right there. But yeah, I don't know who I would give that to. It's a tough one. Well, we're about to find out as we get into the second round of this bout. All right, curious to see how this second round is gonna start. Diaz, nothing suavecito or soft the bottom as he was throwing everything from the start, but the second round is a different tale. Yeah, Calvo really marked up, you can see it. And uh, now we're gonna see, can Diaz continue to bring that same energy that he brought in the first round? And did any of his coaches say, hey man, let's, let's take this guy down and see what he's got? Diaz is very confident in his jiu-jitsu game, in fact, he teaches Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu classes at his camp. Maybe we might see a switch of levels, changing of levels, going to the ground perhaps. Well, I would, uh, I think, oh, I think the, the longer it stays on the feet, I think the distance, well, I think it, it leaves it open to any guy landing a big shot. There's a nice jab right there. Boom! Oh. Great oh, blocking for Calvo. <laughs> Calvo calling him yeah, in. Calvo saying, give me some more. I'm hungry. <laughs> I eat legs for, for breakfast in La Jaula. But man, both guys trying to just tee off right here and, and end it with one shot. Confident. Fernando Calvo, last time he competed in La uh, Jaula was back in June, not too far. And as we go to the up and scoring, 
All right, that, that might have been a eye poke no right there. We're going to give Calvo a little rest on that one. Diaz knew what he did right there, but uh, he's, he's going to get the time minutes. that he needs. Yeah. Let's, Let's hope take a look at the bad. replay here, Martin. Up to five minutes. Yeah, that's oh, a, there it that's is. The, that's an open hand. Yeah, he clearly stuck those fingers. Yeah, right that, was almost, that was almost that was almost a Three Stooges move right there. <laughs> Where yeah, that hey it, for everybody watching, Ready? Ready? we don't Fight. like those open strikes like that. You got to protect the fighter's eyes. You never want to see that change the the fight around for another fighter. Fernando Calvo. Last time we saw him compete was in June, as I said. He was a defeat against Victor Valenzuela. Oh, Calvo just ate a big left again. Another one. That stumbled him. That bothered him right there. This is where, oh, this is where it, Diaz wants it. Diaz smells blood. He's chasing after his prey. Calvo landed a couple of jabs to stay there. Oh, Calvo though was able nice to compose himself. His own. Yeah, he composed himself now. But is, very interesting, though. You take that eye poke, it changes the the momentum of the fight, and then boom, you, you eat a couple of shots. Jose Diaz last competed in May. Oh, that left, that left. Right now, we got blood on the face of Calvo coming out of the nose. Nice body shot right there. And once you see that bloody nose, Martin, as a fighter, do you keep striking it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that not only does it mean the guy's hurt, yeah, right there again, man. Diaz's left is just penetrating. That's about the fifth or sixth one. Now Calvo looks yeah. in trouble. Diaz is just picking Calvo apart. Now, this is where, man, Diaz, if we could just reverse the position right there. Calvo, though, doing a great job of taking the fight to the clinch to slow down the pace of Diaz, who was coming at him. All right, Diaz with that, got his back to the cage. This, uh, love to see a takedown right here, as I've watched so many of his fights, and he's got some great finishes. A bloodied Calvo, though. <laughs> yeah, covered up right now. Ooh, Calvo just eating shots. This is, we still got two minutes to go in this round. I don't know if Calvo escapes it right now. Diaz can feel it. Yeah, but, but Diaz, though, slowly picking apart Calvo, knowing when to strike. He's going to rely a lot on those jabs, those overhands. Well, Diaz seeming to be, look much more relaxed. Oh, my gosh, every one of those. Calvo's in trouble right here. He is in big trouble. He's one or two of those shots away. And what I'm afraid of is if Diaz really gets hungry with that leg kick again, can Calvo defend it. Diaz tried to sneak in an elbow or yeah, two. Yeah, they're both throwing him right now. Calvo not giving up. Oh, nice uppercut from Calvo. You got to appreciate the heart of the Spaniard, but man, heart only gets you so far. But great head movement from great head movement from Diaz. As soon as, oh, oh man, he took that one right in the Diaz. Chin. Diaz is just throwing that left straight down the pipe. We got one minute to go. Can he finish it here? Less than a minute to go, and now for the takedown attempt. No, 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 Calvo said. And wow, even attempted a flying knee. Calvo has the back of Diaz. I hear the clinch work to slow down the pace. Less than 40 seconds to go in the man. second round. The wizard in with Diaz, but man, neither man wants to stay down. I get Calvo it. now being aggressive. Very impressive from Calvo on his takedown defense, not allowing this fight to go to the ground. He definitely puts the brakes on Diaz all those attempts. Well, I think I, in a weird way, it almost looked like Calvo was working for the, the takedown right here. He may try yeah, it, it again. He, yeah, he Look may. at that. He may try it again. He's got the underhooks. He's going he's for, it. for it. Yeah. It's like he's changing of the guard. Well, he survives this round actually using grappling. As we get ready for the last and final round, Calvo and Diaz. Great action from both these men. That yeah. second round, Martin, was definitely something. A yeah, bloodied the, Calvo. The more significant of the two, again, not this fight not going the way that I saw it, where Diaz finding a home for this left. Watch this. Well. He ate a body shot right there, but Diaz just throw, boom! That shot just rocked him over and over. Oh, Calvo, every time he'd step into it, he would just get punished with that left. 
And that definitely won Diaz the round where I didn't think Calvo was gonna escape it. Well, will Calvo live up and see the third round with lots of energy or will Diaz take over and finish off his prey? We'll find out. We're, we're back again there for a minute. He had me going to Calvo with that lip, Martin. Yeah, that was like right. it chewed up. A, yeah, it looks like the, part of it was yeah. gone in Diaz's glove. But yeah, holy cow, third round still could be anybody's fight. The momentum has definitely swung in the way of Diaz, but Calvo's either gonna have to show some big heart or he's gonna have to land something big. Now we'll get a sense of it when that open scoring show shows up here in just a few as far as who is ahead in this bout. Less than five minutes are left to go in this bout between Diaz and Calvo. Yeah, this is gonna be about who is the fresher fighter. Calvo, Calvo surprisingly has recovered, come back, throwing some strikes. And right now scoring at will on Diaz. Do, do you sense that Diaz here is a little bit more a little exhausted here? It's like a Calvo, well, I don't know, he might have had a five hour energy or something and he's just picking up the pace. Look at this. Calvo using his body like a punch and, ooh, throwing that elbow almost to the back of the head there. But uh, hey, Diaz better do something right here because right now that momentum is shifting. For a, for a few seconds there, Diaz looked like a punching bag. And look, take a look at the open scoring here, Martin. Yeah, they've got, you know, Diaz obviously Diaz up ahead. out in front. But I'll tell you what, he's still got to finish this round right here. Calvo, he, I think, figured it out. He needs to work that body. Yeah, people can't appreciate when you eat shots to the body like that. Man, not only is it way more painful than it looks, but in terms of your gas or your wind and your stamina, it can destroy it. And right now, man, really impressed with Calvo's ability to have recovered from that beating he took in the second round. And man, he's throwing elbows, throwing body shots, and uh, Diaz not responding with that left the same way he was before. He's definitely experimenting right from the clinch, throwing some spinning elbow, oh. landing those kicks. But Calvo needs to keep the hands up because if Diaz is one, one of those hands from Diaz, yeah, right now, Diaz went in there. Diaz looking very tired right now, and head feints are not a strategy in MMA, right? This is. He wanted that clinch, Martin. Usually when a fighter does that, you know. He's trying to get some air, but Calvo taking advantage of it oh, and landing man. those Every elbows. Every one of those elbows rocking the head back of Diaz. Right now, this is a dangerous time for him. Oh, Diaz is threw in a spinning elbow himself. Now some clinch work, some knees from Calvo. Mouthpiece fell through Raul Peralta. I, I don't think Diaz was like, I don't want that. Yeah, he's like, no, don't put Let's that one. Let's keep it going. Man, both guys. <laughs> Given again everything they got in La Hala. This is what Combate Global is all about. Oh, great. Standing Nothing in the behind. center, throwing. This is mucho más acción, ladies and gentlemen. Man, no one is going to go home tonight saying neither one of these fighters didn't want it. But holy cow. Two warriors who are hungry for the prize. Although Diaz pointing out to the midsection. I think he got need. Yeah, I th he's saying, you know, calling it a, a groin strike. He's gonna get that break right now. And again, hey, for everybody watching again, when uh, you're hit like that, fighters gotta still defend himself. Let's where? Take a look here. Oh, right yeah. smack. Where you don't want to get hit, Martin. No, that's and that and that's not good for Calvo. Calvo was on that momentum. He was landing in the elbows, especially in the clinch. That just ruins your direction of your fight. Yeah, knee strikes are incredibly powerful, and the last place you want to get hit is there. But now we got to see how Diaz is now going to recover from this. But it also favors him. You know, if it, it, it clearly looked very vicious. However, if he's able to recover real quickly, this is an advantage for him. He gets those five minutes to recover. Well, and he's he's up two rounds on the scorecards of the judges it, with only a half that. a round to go. Look at it from the clinch area, landing in that. I don't know how impactful it was because it's not like how many it was all. You see a little bit of the lip, but it was it was well, it, it was there. I, yeah, I would say this. 
<laughs> the last thing I would want to do is try it out to see how impactful it was. Yeah, I don't but, uh, You be my guest. <laughs> but, but he is going to, you know, if he's wise, he's going to take the, the rest period that he has available to him. And uh, man, and then he's got to he's got to put it all in for that last half of the last round, and he could wrap this fight up. But remember, it's also given Calvo a break, who obviously recovered even after that second round. But I'll tell you what, I, but I haven't even seen Diaz attempt to stand up. He's just laying down. Usually at yeah. this point, if it's depending on the impact, you would at least do a squat, right? That's typically what it takes to squat down. Well, yeah, you don't. There he is. Yeah, he's gonna have to get up. Yeah. And he's going to have to get moving, but I don't know. You know, we have to see how the referee is going to attack this, because what you don't want is this fight to end like this. Oh, Ro Parata telling him if he's ready. Or or asking him if he is. Cravo pacing himself. All right. Now he's attempting looks to like, get hey, yeah, there Looks like go. Diaz is. Yeah, usually that's the first thing you do, right? You try to squat down, kneel down. But in this case, Diaz was just laying flat on the floor. Seems like a lot of impact. There we go. Now that, that's typically what you see, right? Yeah, well, and hey, remember that for everybody at home, the, the fighters do wear protection there, and that protection is pretty solid. It's something that's checked out and made sure that you're wearing the appropriate protection yeah, for yourself. Around, but you still feel it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Still feel it. But doesn't it, matter. Absolutely, and this is... But this is a rarity how we're seeing it right now where Diaz hopefully is going to be able to recover and continue to fight. You know, if, if I was Calvo Martin, it, I had this momentum. I was I had a fast pace. I was, it, it has to be frustrating, right? All right, here we go. So now we're going to go back. Both guys, There's we should see some fireworks right here because the whole fight depends on it. Calvo's got less than two minutes to do something amazing. Calvo picking and choosing his stripe, picking up from where he left off. Both fighters have been damaged. Both fighters have been hurt. Oh. Great low kick. And jab. Oh, he's not Calvo. checking those kicks. No, Calvo landing everywhere. That's bone on bone, people. And this is this is where Calvo was having some fun with it, landing in those elbows. Now just landing shots. Yeah, Diaz, Diaz definitely looks the wearier of the two. But man, Calvo pursuing, but only one minute left. He's got to do something. He has Diaz, to throw. Oh, oh, big shot landed right there. He has to go for the Hail Mary, Martin. Well, he's doing it. He has less than a minute to go if he wants to go home to Spain with a W. The Spaniard's showing a lot of heart. In round two, I didn't think he had anything left. And now, is Diaz going to escape from this round? Really impressive stuff from Cabo. Cal uh, last time we saw him inside La Jaula, the improvement is definitely there going on against an experienced fighter. Two great, two great fighters right here. Two guys putting it all out there. 30 seconds left, which feels like eternity when you're this tired and this banged up. But man, Calvo just zoning in, waiting for that one shot. They're throwing everything. All the energy is being released inside La Jaula. Will it be enough? Will it be enough? Can Diaz hang on? What's at stake? That W it is. We'll find out who the winner is after the break. Yeah. A bloodied man from Spain. Yeah, Cal Isla Aula. Calvo thinks he has it. <laughs> Look at Diaz, Diaz, he's still Diaz still feeling it, the effects of that. And hey, man, hats off to both of these guys, what they just went through. I don't know, I, you know, I don't know if Calvo did enough to win it. Yes, yeah, we get enough ready for the result. Calvo, Diaz, who takes it? We're gonna find out. Let's go! Oh, God. Galvo has his hands up, thinking that he won this one. It's all up to the judges now. Yeah. Diaz. I love you guys. I love you guys. Showing love to his family. And but I think we, we saw that open scoring, yeah. though, Martin. Yeah, remember seeing the open scoring where being ahead by two rounds like that, I don't think Calvo took a 10-8 round in that round. So he may be surprised because he finished with the momentum. But uh, 
but he didn't start off with it, and that may cost him the fight. But how, how much of that impact to the mid, to the lower end, to Diaz, it stopped the momentum of Cabo? Could, could, if Cabo would have continued, would he have finished Diaz? Yeah, it's, it's tough to say, but remember there was the eye poke earlier in the fight too right. that also changed it in the opposite direction. So, man, we saw a lot of punishment dished out. Now it's gonna be, again, did the judges see it as a 10-8 round in the third, which I don't think they will, depending on how they you know, interpret that groin strike, where usually that's not something that goes to your advantage. Calvo and Diaz patiently waiting for the result. I just am surprised we didn't see some of that ground game today. From, from Diaz. Yeah, yeah he's absolutely. That. Absolutely, yeah, well, just a few were about to find out who took this victory. To Lupe Contreras with the result. El juez Toledo anotó 29 a 28 a favor de Calvo after three rounds of much more action. Judge Toledo scores at 29-28 in favor of Calvo. El juez Streisand, 29 a 28 a favor de Diaz. Judge Streisand scores at 29-28 in favor of Diaz. Y el juez Mirasola anotó. 29 a 28, Judge Mirasola scores it 29 to 28. In favor of the winner by way of split decision a favor del vencedor por decisión dividida. El suavecito, Jose Diaz. There's nothing suavecito about Jose Diaz. He just got a hard victory. Oh, yeah. Against Calvo from Spain. And Suavecito, uh, Martin, I always get it confused <laughs> with a song that's called Suavemente, the Sam by Elvis Crespo. Uh, but, you know, I had a conversation with him. Are you going to come out with that song? <laughs> well, well, hey. He's going to go do some dancing now. For Listen, sure. we're excited. Co-main event coming up next. Jose Ferreira undefeated, taking on Patrick Lehan to kick off the main card. This is going to be awesome. Mi nombre es Edir Terry, vengo de Venezuela, Caracas y tengo 34 años. Me fascina pelear, este, desde chiquito siempre estuve peleando. Cuando yo estuve yendo a la escuela yo era una persona bien callada y la, la gente me buscaban para, ¿cómo decirle eso? Bully. Y así fue como comencé yo <ríe> con las peleas. ¿Qué es lo que siento cuando salgo a la jaula, cuando me llaman el hombre? Es como dicen ese dicho, cuando estás enamorado, sientes esas maripositas en el estómago. Y escucho mi nombre, Edir Bélico Terry. Es como que es una impresión que es difícil de explicar, pero es una emoción bien, 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 bien buena. La primera persona que yo llamaría siempre va a ser mi mamá. Me emociona solamente pensar en ella. Es al labor de mi vida. Simplemente ya quiere saber que yo la llame. Y le digo, Edith, estoy bien, mamá, está todo bien, gracias a Dios, gané, perdí, casi lo que me pase, pero estoy bien. Sé de mi contrincante que es un buen boxeador, tiene buena lucha, tiene buen jiu-jitsu. He visto que hace todo de su parte, pero sé que la parte fuerte de él va a ser las manos, que es lo que veo, que es lo que va a estar buscando en esta pelea él. Este, he entrenado un poquito de todo en mis manos, en mis piernas, en mi lucha, en mi jiu-jitsu. Ahí lo van a ver en la pelea. Miguel, acuérdate. Bélico viene por ti. And here we go, the beautiful sights of South Florida, the magic city, Miami. That's the Intercontinental. Right next is the FTX Arena home to the Miami Heat. And then right smack in the middle. That's Bayside for those watching at home. And this, this, this is La Aula. This is the all the competition takes place. A place where so many tales, so many stories, so many victories, so many defeats. But man, is it exciting to step inside La Jaula. Rodolfo Roman in for Max Pretos, joined by the MMA training godfather himself and author, Mr. Martin Rooney, as we get ready to kick off this main card and leading up to next week's main event. La Loba taking on Sally, man. You don't want to miss it. Juliana Pena, former world champion, will be joining us. Man, it's been an exciting year so far. 30 shows. 
not including the reality show, which you can check out right now on VIX Plus. Top gyms going at it toe to toe, but this, here it is, the main card. Kicking off with Jose Ferreira versus Ireland's Patrick Lehan. That's the co cool main event. The main event, Edir Bellico Terry returns to La Jaula, taking on Miguel Gonzalez from Mexico, competing on his country's Independence Day to kick it off with Claudia Zamora versus Liz Phillips. To finish off, as we go to Jose Ferreira. Para mí representar a Chile en combate es una gran experiencia, es algo de verdad que estuve esperando mucho tiempo, pegarme un salto así de grande. Mi nombre es José Ferreira, tengo 24 años y vengo del sur de Chile. Every fight is different. You just got to go in and do your best and get a win, win after win. And like I want to be champion, so if I can't handle number three pressure, what's, what's it going to be like when I'm champion? My name is Patrick Leach Lahan. I'm 23 years old. I'm from Cork City, Ireland. Encuentro un peleador completo, pero a mí no me supera en ninguna cualidad física de las artes marciales. Así que por ende yo creo que lo voy a llevar a mi terreno, que va a ser el suelo y la pelea va a terminar por el gran ampao. Estoy llegando a este momento de mi carrera donde cada lucha significa mucho más. Va a ser una lucha divertida. Y la pelea se va a dar de la manera que se tenga que dar, pero de que vamos a salir con la mano en alto, sí, eso te lo puedo jurar. Está aquí intentando hacer su nombre en esta empresa y estoy aquí para llevar mi dinero y traerlo a casa a mi familia, así que get out of my way. Now time for the head-to-head, -head. la cara a cara. Jose Ferreira of Chile taking on Ireland's Patrick Lahan. 24 years of age for Ferreira, 23 to Lahan. The height advantage goes to Patrick Lahan at 5'11", compared to 5'8", to Chile's Jose Ferreira. They reach 72 even, and the weight class 149.6 to 149.8. And now, Lupe Contreras with the official. Las reglas oficiales de la jaula, tres vueltas de cinco minutos, tres jueces utilizando el sistema de 10 puntos. Este duelo a un peso pactado a 150 libras. This bout at a catch weight of 150 pounds. Los jueces son, the judges are, Mark Streisand, Dorian Mirasola y James Lázaro. Presentando la esquina azul, presenting the blue corner, wearing blue, vestido de azul. Sobre la báscula, marcó un peso oficial de 149 libras y media on the scale. He registered an official 149 and one half pounds. Esta noche, entra la jaula buscando mantenerse invicto en su noveno combate a nivel profesional. Tonight, he enters la jaula looking to remain undefeated in his ninth professional bout. De Temuco, Chile, and fighting out of Chicago, Illinois. Jose Tiro Loco Ferreira. En la esquina roja, vestido de verde en the red corner, wearing green. Su peso oficial, 149 libras y tres cuartos. His official weight, 149 and three quarter pounds. En su séptimo combate a nivel profesional, con cinco victorias y solo una derrota. He enters la jaula for the seventh time as a professional, with five victories against one defeat. Fighting out of Cork, Ireland. The Leech, Pelihan. El referee. Alana Vélez. Alana Vélez, the third man in La Jaula. Patrick Lahan representing Ireland. Jose Ferreira out of Chile. Fighting by way of Chicago, Illinois. Home camp there to the Valley Flow striking. Had some studs coming out. Martin, this is a fun fight, man. Yeah, nobody better blink on this one. I feel we're going to see a lot of energy. Whoa, whoa. Immediately, right start. immediately going for the takedown, which is what Ferreira wanted to do. He said he wanted to do it. He said he wanted to take Lahan down and ground and pound him. We're going to get an opportunity here to see what Lahan can do, what his defense is like down there. If he decides to get back to the feet right now, setting up a almost, well, looking for a. The, the last time we saw Lahan on the ground was when he took on Christian Puas Perez. And Puas took him to him on the floor, but Lehan was able to overcome that groundwork. Again, it was a tournament fight, so they fought only for five minutes. Someone already bloodied up Martin. I yeah, I see some I see some drops right there, but hey, Lahan showing 
Ferreira striking. right there, that he's competent on the ground. Ferreira was not able to do anything, and that can change the momentum here and the strategy. Jose Ferreira, a champion in his home country. Oh, spinning back fist. Yeah, it looks like the right eye of Lahan yeah, yeah. right now, but landing some strikes. And he said he's been boxing his whole life, really likes to strike. Been fighting MMA for a number of years, Lahan has. Again, fighting out of SBG Cork City. And everybody should know the SBG organization, Conor McGregor out of there and, uh, you know, worldwide. So they've got some great guys to train with. Oh, right there, though. Setting Lahan it up, that's a striking, yeah. Lahan, the last time we saw him compete was in, not too long ago, in action inside La Jaula when he took on Gabriel Morales, defeated him in the second round via TKO. And last year, he competed in two tournaments Oh, the yeah. clash of fist there between two men. Well, Lahan, the eye is not looking great right now. We're two minutes into this fight, and uh, the Chilean looks very relaxed. Continues to land, now another takedown. Seems so great. And fighters. Lahan looking to get the back to the cage and then get himself back up. You can see he does not want to engage down there, which is uh, a good strategy. That's the referee angle or referee camera giving you that other view of what it's like to be inside La Jaula, is what it's like to be a referee and see it with your own eyes. Oh, Ferreira has the back right now. Great way of Lahan's got to yeah. break that grip Push and then that turn hip. back towards him, yep. which he's doing a job of. He's got, he's controlling the arm to stop that takedown, doing a good job of that, back on the feet. Again, showing his competency there on the ground, but Ferreira just continuing in, in a weird way. He's acting like the leech on the leech right now. <laughs> Ferreira is coming off a victory back in April when he defeated his opponent by way of Anna Candle Choke. Prior to that was ground and pound victory in May of last year, and then in 2020 of November. Well, he's a landed, rear naked choke victory. He's landing some significant kicks on that front oh. leg of Lahan. And uh, hey, he's got two takedowns to his credit right now. Lahan's got to do a, something pretty spectacular in this last minute and a half, I think, to sway the judges. Nice body shot there to start that off. Well, you can see that they're both men respect each other's striking. But there Lahan, we we've seen Lahan several times inside La Jaula, and that's what he likes to do here. Well, this is the classic striker. There we go, striker versus grappler battle. Ferreira again seeking that takedown. Lahan doing a great job right there. Escaping, throwing an elbow at the same time. And uh, this is gonna come down to conditioning for both of these fighters here. Well, they both train in respected camps. I'm sure that conditioning is there for both of them. But for Ferreira continuing to land with the hands too. Backing Lahan up. Now yeah, Ferreira attempted that Superman punch. Oh. He got thrown to the floor with that body shot from Patrick. Body shot takedown. Does Lahan want to do something with his back? Uh, but it looks like Ferreira's back up. How sweet it would be if Patrick were to take a victory by way of submission against a submission artist, right? <laughs> well, it looks like he's still he's trying to continue to bring him to the ground here, too. Not letting him out. He's got to get those hips behind. Uh, and he's back out. Clinch work here. Ten seconds to go. We will see more action from the Irishman taking on the Chilean. Great. I gotta give that round to to Ferreira right there. The two takedowns, the solid shots, and man, the bloodied face of Lahan that's gotta sway the judges right now. And look at that. Very conditioned, not breathing heavy at all. Looking really relaxed in La Jaula. He did get an up kick there, Patrick Lahan, and then he followed up. That knee, though, was a little questionable because that knee, Patrick's knee was on the floor. Yeah, hand was still down, but it didn't land, so I guess Allen didn't want to attack that right then. But man, Ferreira continued to land. Strikes, spinning back fist right there, but he took a, body, a couple of body shots, one of them that put him down. So again, Lahan landing there. Flashy fighter from Ferreira as we see the debut here in Santa Jaula. Get ready for the second chapter. Second out, second out, second out. 
That right eye from Patrick has a, yeah, that's a nasty nat gash. Yeah, that's a nasty cut right there. Doctor's coming in to check it out, Martin. It's, man, and hopefully we keep this fight going because it's been exciting so far, those five minutes of it. Yeah, that It'd one. be a bummer if the Red Doctor says that's it. But no, it's okay. We're yeah, good to go. Great. Letting them go. And hey, everybody watching right now, no matter what, Lahan's going to be getting himself some stitches tonight. And uh, you know what? To continue to fight like that shows incredible heart. Well, he has a lot of heart. This man came in to combat the Rabat last year, made his professional debut with a lot of hype. He went viral with a video that went out in his amateur career. And he's absorbing up some to the shots hype. early, though, right there. Absorbing some shots. Ferrer still very relaxed. He's found a home with that right leg kick. And man, another takedown attempt, trying to run the pipe right here. But you give to give credit where credit is due, Martin. And Lehan is doing everything he can to defend it properly. Oh, yeah, but man, Ferreira just, just going for it until he gets it. Now he's got the back, smothering the leech right now. Great defense from Patrick here using that howl of psychology. Yeah, continuing, continuing to get back up. But man, right now, Ferreira using his weight against him. And again, he's going to seek another takedown and get it. And right now, continuing to use that. But man, Lahan back on his feet again. But the amount of energy that that costs. The hand ranked the number nine featherweight and number three lightweight. We got an open scoring. Well, Tiro Loco right now saying, trying to put himself into it where, hey, two to ahead. one. He's ahead. Yeah, he's ahead two to one on the judges. But one of the judges saw it for Lahan that round. Very early on in this bout. It's for the taking of any of these two warriors. It's yeah, still very close, but remember, now almost two minutes into this round again, Lahan's been taken down two or three times. There's been some significant strikes. He's got to get active, start landing. Ooh, ooh. Big Here body shot. there. And big leg kick again. Boy, yeah, Lahan looking. We're, we're in another studio, but I, I okay. felt the shock from that <laughs> shot right here on the floor. Well, right now, Lahan on top. Can he ground and pound a little bit? Yeah, you got to watch out for the up kicks, though, Martin. Yeah, but keeping those hips forward, driving him, take the back, take the back if he could. Up kick has been very good. The guillotine is also available. The arm and choke. Looks like Lahan is trying to work maybe for a, a Darce right there, but doesn't get it. Now, Lahan having the advantage here. Yeah, but it seems Ferreira is very comfortable on the ground. Uh, Back up and then lands a big elbow. With the elbow. And now he's cut open on the left. Yeah, Lahan bleeding out of both sides side. right now. But Lahan, he, he, he tends to get cut pretty quickly in the fight. Yeah, yeah but he'll, he'll, he'll maintain there. Yeah, a few of his fights, he's had some, he's, he's cuts, been bleeding yeah. before. But I'll tell you what, coming back, now it's shifting. He's landing those body shots. And you hear Lahan's corner saying, work the, oh, oh. got to keep them hands up. Oh, spinning back fist right into the right cross. Boy. Ferreira, really impressive. Very impressive. Listen, he trains with the BFS. Well rounded, and now, now on top, in half guard. Could go to cross side right here. And when you, when you talk about the camp that Jose Ferreira trains at, Martin, this is a man who trains with the likes of Ignacio Bahamondes. Oh, a, he better, oh, be, he, he better be careful. Lahan better be very careful right now. And I'll tell you what, this is, this is where Ferreira wanted to get, to have that weight on top of him, weighing Lahan down. But Lahan's still getting back to his feet up, but he's got to watch oh. it right here. Got to watch it. He's working for something so fast. Jose Ferreira, I'm sure his camp is very excited. Enrique Baby Gupo Gonzalez, number one lightweight trains out of there as well. Seems many fighters compete inside La out of that camp. I'm sure they're they're elated right now watching this fight. Well, Ferreira showing off an, a, a complete arsenal from takedowns, strikes with the hands, strikes with the feet, submission attempts, and uh, yeah, Lahan has his hands full right now. Another Ooh. kick to the leg. Great teep from Patrick. And again, just the, the conditioning of Ferrer, you can see still looks the fresher of the two fighters. Oh, spinning back kick. To I, the I, I think what's, what's confusing 
uh, Patrick Martin is that flashiness that Ferreira comes in. He hits oh, you with a spinning back fist, the knees. You just don't know what, where he's going to strike. He's unpredictable. So right now, this, uh, I think, is starting to become more difficult for Lahani. He's not near the cage right now. Going to be more difficult to get on his feet. Ten seconds Ten left, seconds though. He's going to go. survive the round. Deck. Here we go, the final round of this bout. Will Patrick step up, we're about to find out. Wow. Good wow. stuff, Martin, from both these two gentlemen going at it. Two warriors, Patrick Lehan, a bloodied man, but it ain't gonna stop him. He's a wounded warrior with his two hands up, ready for battle. No, oh, another amazing fight. This is what Combate is all about. Big strikes. We got a big slam right here, too. Lahan was tossed around in that round, continued to get put down over and over, but continued to fight. And uh, right there, man, big elbow landed by Ferreira. Tiro Loco is living up to the name, spinning back fist to, man, an entire complete arsenal today. The only thing we're missing is the submission, and we may see it tonight in the third round. We've seen Patrick Lahan in situations like this. Will he overcome? Third round. Here we go, the final chapter to this bout between Lahan and Chiles Ferreira. Will he keep his O? <laughs> that is at stake right now. Doc just checking in that cut of Patrick. He's a bloodied man. Yeah, that right cut now. is pretty deep on yeah, that right eye, right above. He's being real careful about that eye, but the good news it is not, it doesn't look like it's bleeding as into it. As long as it doesn't impact his visibility, he's good to go. But the bad news is he's probably behind two rounds to one, and uh, he's got to win by knockout or submission to uh, seal the victory. And man, Ferreira is going to have something to say about that because he is coming out swinging. Ferreira, very impressive reason why he is undefeated. He's living up to that. Well, and, and you know, this can really shuffle up the Combate Global rankings where Set. Ferreira just firing in now, going for another takedown. Just look how comfortable he is still in, a, in that position and boom, gets it. You know, the hand fights, he's fought at the 155. He fought at the 145. You know, a win here or, or a defeat or a defeat. This could be trouble right now. Oh, he could be in a tough yeah. posi position right here, Martin. Yeah, this is, like I said, the only thing that was missing from what we've seen tonight is the submission. And I know Ferreira wants it, and he is getting closer and closer as Lahan's energy continues to wane. He'll probably go for another throw right here and try to continue to keep him on the mat which Ferreira seems to be much more comfortable. Yeah, and we've seen him in action. Backs Many against the here. cage. We may see him lower his level. Try to get that leg. And, and there it is. The hand is a man who has a, uh, an extraordinary amateur career, had several competition. Right now, though, Ferreira is on top, full mount. Very comfortable there. It's a tough position for Patrick Lehan. Yeah, the, you can't do much from down there and already losing this fight. You can feel it slipping away and it becomes so difficult as a fighter where he's gotta, he's gotta get his back to the cage, try to get back to his feet. But Ferreira is gonna make that near impossible with all his weight on top of him. Look at that blood just leaking from his right eye, Martin, and on the left side as well, underneath the eye. Yeah, Ferreira, you know, now on the back again, searching for a choke. Patrick in hand. And now he may just, man, another slam can just, you know, it'll just take the, yeah, oh, and there slam. it is. And see that, I, you know, this is what you see coming. And hey, Lahan, it's not his fault, but man, it's almost, it's gonna be more and more difficult to continue to fight your way back up to then get demoralized and slam back down. 
Ferreira. And every one of those hammer fists just continuing to cut him open more. Ferreira is just a, right now just looking like a savage inside La Hala, leaving La hand just puzzled, not knowing what to do. How to get in this position as we're giving you another angle yeah, now, from the referee camera. Now Ferreira in cross side. Gonna be very difficult for Lahane to get out of there. You gotta consider too, and as we look at the open scoring, Martin, there's no doubt here. Yeah. Jose Ferreira, the chief from Chile, ahead of the now, game. Now he's got to watch the head and arm choke right here, which Ferreira may be looking for. But man, full mounted position, very dangerous right now for Lahan. He's either got to turn his back to make something happen, or he's going to take punishment and the fight could end there. Patrick is just stuck in a position that he just can't get out. Jose yeah, has the hands on the wheel, Martin. He is controlling this fight on the floor. Patrick just can't find a gap to get out. Yeah, he has shown himself as a complete fighter today. All areas, on the ground, on the feet. And uh, man, all we need to see now is can he go for that finish? A little over a minute remaining. Very tough spot for Lahan right here as again, he's in cross side, back to full guard, but man, eating punishment, dragged to the center of the La Haula, very difficult to do anything from there. This third round has been uh, a very tough situation for Patrick Lahan, he just can't get out, he can't overcome this. He's not, he hasn't used anything in the striking, it's just been Ferreira just controlling the ground for the most part of this third round, Martin. Yeah, but showing tremendous heart for anybody that is watching this to continue to watch him fight. But we gotta watch out for a choke right here. Nope, he's out again. And just to continue to fight, not to give up. That's what the Irishman is showing us here is all heart. All heart, but heart's not gonna win you yeah. fights, Martin. He needs to, he has less than 20 seconds to go. He himself has to pick up a trick off his hat and maybe yeah. pull out a submission where he can. But Ferreira is just controlling the entire time on the floor. Yeah, with 10 seconds left, this was a completely dominant round for Ferreira. And man, really tough fight for Lahan. Great debut for Jose Ferreira here inside La Jaula. Great action. But next week, Seliman, La Loba. Let's get to meet Seliman in the main event next week. Mama, Papa, Paulina. Mi nombre es Miguel González, Iron Mike, soy de México y tengo 28 años. Lo que más me gusta de mi país es la gente, eh, todo ese cariño que tenemos y que somos guerreros. La forma en la que empecé en el deporte fue una vez que estaba viendo la televisión con mi hermano y de repente vimos a alguien este, golpearse en la jaula y todo eso y no sabíamos que eran las artes marciales mixtas hasta que le preguntamos a mi papá qué era eso y le dijimos queremos hacer eso y nos metió a boxear a mi hermano y a mí. El MMA me ha dado mucha disciplina y compromiso hacia las cosas. Es un deporte que te exige demasiado y un compromiso muy grande. Mi estilo de pelea es, eh, es agresivo, es, se adapta también, no solamente se compromete a un solo estilo, o sea, no soy un striker ni un grappler, soy alguien que puede pelear en, ambas, eh, en ambos mundos del MMA y no le tengo miedo a ningún aspecto. Lo que me hace diferente de mis oponentes es mi voluntad, es mi disciplina y mis ganas de probarme. Eh, yo esto lo hago para demostrar que soy el mejor, demostrarme a mí que soy el mejor, no, no le quiero demostrar a nadie más. No soy una persona que solo va a ir a que le pegues y a ver quién se cae primero, voy a ser una persona que va a encontrar tus debilidades y las voy a explotar. No tengo miedo en pelear en arriba, en el piso, en la jaula, soy bueno en todos lados, entonces pues espera que siempre te sorprenda en todas las posiciones que existan en en la pelea. Después de tres vueltas, los jueces Streisand y Lázaro entregan tarjetas idénticas de 30 a 27 after three rounds. Judges Streisand and Lázaro score about identically at 30 to 27. Y el juez Mirasola anotó 29 a 28. Judge Mirasola scores at 29 to 28. All in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. Los tres a favor del ganador por decisión unánime. El tiro loco. Jose 
Ferreira. That's a beautiful shot, the Freedom Towers FTX. If you haven't been to Miami, Florida, we invite you to come and visit. We got beautiful beaches, great weather when it cooperates, but it, that is a nice view there of Biscayne Boulevard. Miami, Florida, South Florida has been home to Combate Global and La Jaula, where much competition will be taking place here tonight, including our main event, Edir Bellico Terry taking on Mexico's Miguel Iron Mike Gonzalez. A scrap at 135 pounds. Should be a one to deliver as we get ready for a feature. The players of Venezuela are changing so simply that we are going to fight with everything. Hasta la muerte. Comencé con base de striking, pero básicamente hoy en día hago todo. Yo solamente me enfoco en entrenar fuerte, en hacer lo que tengo que hacer. Lo estoy mirando que lo voy a noquear o lo voy a someter. Cuando él mire la fuerza en mis puños y en mis patadas, siento que va a querer ir por una tumbada y cuando vayamos al piso, ahí es donde va a haber la diferencia. So, de las dos maneras lo miro terminando. O lo termino con un KO o lo termino con una sumisión. Miguel, acuérdate de mi nombre, Bélico. Bélico viene por ti. A dear Bélico, Terry Bélico. In Spanish, roughly translates to extreme, someone who's fearless. Alongside there, Danny Chavez on the, his corner, man. Adir Terry returning to La Jaula last. He competed last year. He is on a two-win fight streak. Considers himself a freestyle fighter. Again, look out for those that stand up. He likes to do the cartwheel Muay Thai kick. Well known by Sanchai, if you are a diehard follower of Muay Thai, Martin. Yeah, well, hey, if we see that tonight, I will, <laughs> I will be really excited. But I think from what he said, he wants to take him down. He wants to ground and pound him. He wants a finish. And now let's get ready to meet his opponent, Miguel Iron Mike Gonzalez. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Lo que más me gusta de mi país es la gente, todo ese cariño que tenemos y que somos guerreros. Representar a mi país, México, es importante para mí porque demostramos que la mentalidad del mexicano está cambiando poco a poco y estamos midiéndonos con un terreno internacional cada vez más este, fuerte y dominando en los deportes. El MMA me ha dado mucha disciplina. Es un deporte que te exige demasiado y un compromiso muy grande. No soy una persona que solo va a ir a que le pegues y a ver quién se cae primero. Voy a ser una persona que va a encontrar tus debilidades y las voy a explotar. Quiero probarme con la mejor competencia que pueda. Miguel Iron Mike Gonzalez returning to La Jaula since he last saw action last year. Right behind him is his brother, Maximiliano Gonzalez, who recently was victorious inside La Jaula here in Combate Global. Gonzalez said he, he wanted to fight this year. However, for some unforeseen reasons, he hasn't been able to, but it's okay, it's cool. Hey, listen, I changed my weight class. I feel a lot better. I'm gonna give my opportunities in here. He's fighting at 135 instead of 145, and he looks ripped. Yeah, he, he's in shape for this fight. There's no doubt about it, but I will say he's gonna have his hands filled with Adir Terry, who is the more experienced of the two fighters, and we're gonna find out what that jiu-jitsu black belt means coming out of his camp and uh, if it will do what he needs it to do tonight because man este I'll tell you Terry's coming for him. Duelo estelar de esta noche, tres vueltas, división peso gallo. This is the main event. If we take a look at the head-to-head, -head, la cara a cara, Terry Gonzalez, 34 years old for Terry, 28 for Gonzalez. Height, not much of a difference, just that one inch. 68.5 on the reach, weight pretty much almost identical. Just 135.4 for Terry, 135.8 pounds for Gonzalez. Man, Gonzalez has a lot on his back. He's fighting on Mexican Independence Day. That's huge. Let's go, Lupe Contreras, the introduction. Este es 
El duelo estelar de esta noche, tres vueltas, división peso gallo. This is the main event, three rounds. In the Bantamweight division, los jueces son the judges are Dorian Mirasola, James Lázaro y Lorenzo Toledo. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. Presentando la esquina azul, vestido de azul, introducing the blue corner, wearing blue, detuvo la báscula a un peso oficial de 135 libras y media. He tipped the scales at an official 135 and one half pounds. En 12 combates profesionales, mantiene un récord de 8 victorias y 4 derrotas. En 12 bouts as a professional, he has a record of 8 victories against 4 losses. Representando a Caracas, Venezuela, Edil. Bélico Terry. Su rival en la esquina roja, vestido de verde, is opponent in the red corner, wearing green. Su peso oficial, 135 libras y tres cuartos, is the official weight, 135 and three quarter pounds. Entra por séptima vez a la jaula, con un récord de cinco victorias y solo una derrota. He enters la jaula for the seventh time as a pro, with a record of five victories against one lone defeat. De la capital azteca, la ciudad de México, Miguel Iron Mike González, el referee internacional, Raúl Porrata. Al centro. Obey my commands and protect yourselves at all times. Obedezcan mis órdenes y protegen a todos momentos. Toquen guante ahora si quieren. Regresen a sus esquinas. Here we go, the third man in la jaula, Raúl Porrata. Miguel González. Edir Terry. Listo. Venezuela Listo. versus Mexico. Acción. Here we go, three round main event fight. Martin, lots of nerves. Especially for Miguel, man, You're, this is a huge deal. Yeah, but man, Terry looks all business. He was laser beam focused right there and uh, not concerned about the camera, not concerned about the hand touch. And now we're going to see who's going to anchor in. Yeah, on paper, there's no doubt Terry is the most experienced of the two. Great left jab to start it off here to wake up Gonzalez and say welcome. Terry said he, he was going to feel the power of his strikes and be surprised. We know he can kick. Ooh. But Gonzalez has already taken at, a knee. Look, look at Gonzalez's face. It's yeah, already, already a little, red, a little already shiny there. got a little something from that, that left jab. Ooh. Terry not phased. Yeah, Iron, is Mike, Iron Mike throwing. But now in that clinch. Terry wanted to take this fight in the cellar of La Jaula to exchange with Gonzalez. Very patient. You hear Terry's corner telling him to use, oh, that's that low calf kick, yeah, man. That it's leg dangerous. Kick was wide open. When it takes you down like that, man, there's a ton of power behind it, just like Terry predicted. And now we're going to see the jujitsu black belt on the ground. Can he make something happen here? Can he use this position to his advantage? Terry predicted he would not. Terry of that Venezuelan and Peruvian blood. But right now, Iron Mike defending himself, throwing some elbows from the bottom in full guard. He may go fishing for an arm or something right here, which he is. This is what's looking for a looking maybe for a Kimura. This is what Martin, this is what Miguel wanted to take this fight on the floor where he's gonna have more of an upper hand. Well, I don't think he wanted to take it on the floor <laughs> with that leg but kick he, from he Terry. Was to, he was taken to yeah, the floor. He, yeah. but, but this is where he feels more comfortable, of course. Yeah, and this is where jiu-jitsu comes in, where you see how it nullifies the position. And even though Terry's in an advantageous position right here, not getting to do a lot and actually eating some elbows too, but in the eyes of the judges, Terry is in top and controlling the fight. Last time we saw Miguel Gonzalez, he went in a similar position. He took on Chris Boasso, a very diverse and experienced fighter. And Boasso had the upper hand. And when you least expect it, Miguel ended up taking in that victory by way of guillotine choke in the second round. 
Could that be a mirror image? Could that be the same story here tonight against Terry? We're still in the first round. Gonzalez really impressive right now with those jujitsu skills. And uh, again, going for that Kimura right here. Ooh, Terry's arm in a bad position. He's in trouble, Martin! And Tier Terry! Using it for a sweep, though, and now going right into the head and arm choke. Terry's gonna have to be very careful. Similar situation the last time we got, saw Gonzalez in La Hala. He seemed he was in trouble when in the stand-up game, but when the fight went to the floor, it was a different story. Terry comfortable there, though, and putting his weight forward. He'd want to pass off that leg. He's got to be really careful, but he's, he's changing that grip, so right now he's still okay. In that position, yep, he's try to he's got to try to pass that leg, but very dangerous for him. Oh, and he's out. So very does, nice exchange. So does Terry land some ground and pound action, or does he go back to the feet where you're having more of an advantage? Yeah, I think I think Terry, the strategy is going to change in the next round, and he's going to have to keep it on the feet because Gonzalez has established that he is not only dangerous down there, he's used it to sweep, and again, Terry's got to be really careful. Very slick game from the bottom, but I think in the eyes of the judges, Terry's winning this round. Terry last competed in the out of back of May of 2021, defeating Carlos Puente Jr. by way of TKO in the third round. His last competition was in October against Tyler Wilson. He won that one by decision. He's fishing for that Kimura again, which again nullifies any strikes from Terry. So he's done a good job not really absorbing any punishment, but staying on your back, unless you get that sub, isn't gonna score you any points with the judges. So Terry has controlled this round, but actually been in trouble a couple of times off that Kimura. So to kick off the second round, if we go there, we still got 20 seconds to go. Yeah, Martin. 20 seconds. If he could land a little ground and pound, but put the, a little something on Gonzalez right here. To kick off that second round, if I was Terry, though, do you keep it standing? Do you move away, not allowing Gonzalez to go in? Of course, Gonzalez was taken to the floor because of the calf kick. All right, here we go. Second round. The fight started off with the Deer Terry having the advantage with that low calf kick, but then Miguel Gonzalez just experimenting on the floor. Yeah, I think Terry surprised Gonzalez with his power, but then I think Terry was surprised by Gonzalez on the ground. Gonna be very interesting in round two. Very interesting to see what game plan or how we begin in the second round of Terry versus Gonzalez in the main event. We are back, second round. Terry getting his final pep talk before we go into the second chapter. And then Miguel Gonzalez on the opposite side. Felt very confident on the floor. He nearly got some submissions there. But the reason he got there is because of Deer's calf kick. Yeah, so we're gonna have to see what the judges thought when we see the open scoring, what what they thought was more and important. Again, but there's that to go. kick again. He tried to I, go for the calf kick again. And I think if Terry is smart, he's gonna try to keep this on the feet and really throw. But right now, Gonzalez trying to look comfortable there too. Yeah, he tried to go and really corner himself. And you hear the corner of Terry, get out of there. And that's a good position for Gonzalez to switch levels and. Take the fight to the ground. Yeah, landing a la nice combination right there. there Gonzalez establishing himself on the feet just like he did on the ground. That's that Muay Thai background. He went to Thailand to train. In fact, he even recommended a gym to go out there. He was okay. Gotta give him props for that. <laughs> well, belly coat is, is finding a home with those kicks on the front of that left shin of Gonzalez, but Gonzalez continuing to stalk and move him back. And uh, Terry right now gonna have to get active. It's a turn of the page in this round, Martin. It seems like Gonzalez is a lot more confident compared to that first round where Tier just came in, kicking him in the calf kick and taking the fight to the floor. But Gonzalez is different here. Yeah, right now, Gonzalez trying to stalk him into the corner, throw some big shots, which he is. Terry has been landing those kicks, and it looks like, Terry's come on, give me something. smiling, but I, I, I wouldn't be smiling. Look at Gonzalez. He feels very confident. He's having a lot of impact with those hands. Yeah, usually when you're smiling, that means you have been hit really solid, and uh, not a good thing to be doing. Can't too, be too confident. 
Oh, right there, reverse in position. Now he can work those knees. That plum that he's using, that tie plum, has been pretty successful for Terry. Now, Terry, that kick is available again. That front leg, that lead leg, way out, oh, way out there. Let's see if Terry wants to give him another one on it. I, I feel though the, the, the range or the, the action coming from Gonzalez, a lot different fighter from that first round. Oh, absolutely. In the stand-up game. Absolutely, he's pushing the pace. He's, he found himself very confident on the ground, which I think he probably feels great about. And now he's, man, the more active fighter, spinning back fist, now combinations on the ropes. Terry's gotta get out of there. Gonzalez training with the Adam Camp out of Mexico, has a brown belt in jiu-jitsu. Because when he doesn't, uh, he's not training any martial arts. He's uh, bouldering, practicing the bouldering. Yeah, we got <laughs> we got bouldering. We got businesses. This guy's a very diverse fighter, man. He has the mezcal bouldering. But I'll tell you what, right, right now, right now he's he's put he put he just put on a little jujitsu clinic before, and now he's he's throwing some solid strikes too. He said he likes to fight. The reason he fights motivation is. Oh. So the judges are scoring. Dear, dear Terry taking clearly that first round. And now trying to take him down again, which is very interesting, where I would say the momentum shifted towards Gonzalez on the feet right now, where with a minute and 45 left, that takedown, if Terry can now capitalize it, which he's trying to, get his hips away from the cage, up, oh, but G Gonzalez now back up and oh, back down. Up. Yeah, he was trying to finish off that takedown. So Terry, finally did. <laughs> Terry looking comfortable there. Now on cross side, a more difficult for position for Gonzalez to get back to guard. But Terry can't do a lot from there either. But those takedowns could influence the judges again. Look at Terry's impact. Look at that upper lip from Gonzalez swollen. Well, right now, this is a relatively safe position for both fighters. But again, Terry's got to make something happen here. He's landing in those forms. Ground and pound is what's going to win it for Terry here. But Gonzalez, we've seen him in previous competitions where he seems in trouble and out of nowhere, he pulls a rabbit out of the hat. Yeah, well, Gonzalez very, very relaxed down there. Doesn't feel that threatened. He's been defending himself well. Now he's, he's trying to get back to either a half guard or guard position which he's almost there. Don't want to give the back though, Martin. No, I get you in big, big trouble. I think what we saw already though, I think, you know, as a jiu-jitsu black belt, Gonzalez is, would be very comfortable there. But Terry almost reaching full mount right there, which would be an accomplishment in itself on the black belt. But with 10 seconds left, tough round to call. Oh, you get ready for the second round, for the third round. Terry and Gonzalez. There we had competition from both these men. It seems like Gonzalez here bleeding from the lip or the nose couldn't quite see there, but great striking to kick off this round, Martin. Yeah, and Gonzalez really brought it for the first half, but then got taken down again and controlled. And, and as we saw in the first round, the judges favored Terry on that. If Terry stole the second round, Gonzalez is going to have to do something. He's going to have to get a sub to win it. Now he did it previously. He's done it in the past. He still have five minutes to do so. That's Miguel Gonzalez. Great opportunity for him in the main event. We get ready for the last five minutes of this bout. All right, here we go. Last five minutes of this bout. A dear Terry representing Venezuela and Peru. Ready. Miguel Gonzalez fighting on Ready. Mexico's Independence yeah. Day. Last round, best round. And hey, it is up for grabs right now. Anybody's fight. Both men have landed significant strikes. Both men have done stuff on the ground. And uh, it's going to come down to these next four minutes and 45 seconds. Who wants it? Attacking that, that calf. Miguel Gonzalez, patient, where to strike. Those kicks have really worked for Terry today. And you think if he just continues to throw on that left leg, score some points. But man, Gonzalez just keeps backing him up. Lots of feints coming from Terry. But Miguel Gonzalez not 
afraid to also push the pace when the opportunity is available. One, two combo from Gonzalez. Take that from Terry. From Terry. That's making the big difference here, and he's having lots of control. Gonzalez might have that jujitsu background, but Terry, when it comes to landing forearm shots, body shots on the ground, he's the man that has had that advantage. Well, and I think right now, Gonzalez, as you see, he was kind of scrambling to get back up. It's interesting that now he understands he can't just spend the next round on his back. That will not win it for him. He's got to either do something Oof. or Terry is going to continue to do stuff like that and steal this fight from him. Yeah, he landed that, that knee to the sternum. And Martin, when you're on the floor like Gonzalez, sure, you might know as much jiu-jitsu as you can and be the best you can. That's exhausting. Uh, well, not only exhausting, but you can't really do much damage there. So you either got to hunt for a submission but you just don't want to get comfortable and defend, and that's what it looks like Gonzalez is kind of doing right now. He's blocking that he won't get hit, but he's either got to back up. He's, go, he's going for a, you know that Kimura again. And that's the open scoring there, Martin. Rightfully so, dear Terry, ahead of the game. Yeah, t the judges are valuing Terry's control on the ground. And uh, the striking. Yeah, and you can't argue with it. But so Gonzalez in a deep hole right now has to do something. And Terry very comfortable down here too. And uh, man. Yeah, Terry just controlling the ground here very effectively, leaving Gonzalez no opportunities for no submissions, nothing. Gonzalez just a more powerful of the two. Well, remember, training where he trains, this is the kind of stuff he sees every day. And as these athletes get sweatier and sweatier, a submission gets more, more, yeah, more and more difficult. And there's just the fatigue sets in as well. But right now, Terry looking in control of this one with two minutes and 15 seconds left. You know, Terry trains with the likes of Daniel Barverde, who is just a, a, a oh, well-known. up to take him back down. The Barverde, a very well-known jiu-jitsu practitioner, but he may be caught maybe in a submission guillotine. And Terry could be in hot water here, Martin. Terry pressing on that arm, which definitely tells me it's dangerous Can right he now. escape? He's trying to get the head out. It could pop out, and it will. Oh, got saved. Wow. And I credit needs to probably go to the sweat, <laughs> because at this time in this fight, with a minute and 40, a minute and 40. To try to get that grip. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, all heart right there for Terry, because most people on Earth, maybe they don't get out of that one. And he knew he had come too far to get caught in that. But again, another submission attempt by Gonzalez, a near miss that, hey, he has done that today. It's just, you can't win a fight from your back. Protect yourself at all times, no matter if you're ahead. Because at any time, at any second, you could get caught. Well, right now, again, Gonzalez trying to perhaps fish for that Kimura, but you see Terry's just keeping his head in there now. He's not going to allow that to happen again. We're under a minute to go in this one, and uh, unless we see a submission miracle right now, man, Terry in control. Terry here unleashing shots, hammer fists, forearms. And just with all that weight pressing his hips against the cage, you can see Gonzalez's head pinned in there. Very difficult position to do anything from when your head, when your chin is in your chest. And it's given Terry the opportunity to just rain down. Terry. Just like that right there. Terry's corner oh. telling him to finish him. Oh, he has less than 20 seconds to do it. Man, that was a big body shot. Just missed a, you know, a clubbing chin shot right there. And now Terry going for it. Yeah, Gonzalez just in deep trouble here. It seems like Terry is going to take this victory. Will remain undefeated inside La Jaula. We're about to find out. My name is Claudia Zamora, and I am from Miami, Florida. My fighting style, I'm an original striker, um, but with these solid five years under my belt of MMA training. I feel like I am definitely a well-rounded uh, fighter. And and to be honest, sometimes I I, I really enjoy taking the, the fight to the ground and uh, controlling my opponent and grounding and pounding or submission. 
What I like about MMA the most is uh, the challenge that it gives me, uh, also the happiness it gives me from accomplishing huge, difficult goals and tasks. It makes me happy, it, it keeps me going, and it, it um, helps me uh, regulate my mood, helps with depression, anxiety, uh, and just gives me the ultimate fulfillment in my life. I am confident in myself, I am a hard worker, um, and, and I'm always ready to fight. I imagine this fight, feeling her out, seeing you know what, how she is in the striking department, um, but pressuring and putting and picking up the pace a lot. Um, I'm going to use a lot of pressure and um, gra submission grappling tonight. You can expect me to go out there and absolutely kill it. I'm looking forward to fighting her, and I welcome her into the cage, and it's going to be a good fight. And here we go, the results between Miguel Gonzalez versus Edir Terry. Great fight of this main event as we go to the result. Luvo, la voz, Lupe Contreras. Los tres jueces entregan tarjetas de 30 a 27. All three judges turn in scores of 30 to 27. In favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision, a favor del vencedor, por decisión unánime. Edir Bellico. A dear Terry from Venezuela, also representing Peru, remains undefeated in La Jaula. Second victory in Combate Global. Says he wants a piece of some of the men ranked in his division. But now, Claudia Zamora, Elizabeth Phillips, they go at a toe to toe to put the bow on this fight card. Yeah, Terry had the ability to nullify that and just came out. Just look at the seriousness in his eyes. And it was all business. And Gonzalez showed some parts there, right? Like, hey, he, he ate some leather, but look, he was throwing some big kicks at some point too. And there was a few times he had some momentum, but the leg kicks made a difference for Terry and definitely the takedowns. Now right here, this was a Kimura attempt that Gonzalez used to get a sweep, but Terry was able to not only get out of it, but then get back to his feet. So it wasn't used as an advantage. And this is when, hey, Gonzalez was throwing the big strikes, but then Terry took control again. And as we're surely gonna see, it started going to the ground. And that's where Terry found his control spot and won this fight. Terry, who first coached Mariel Seliman in her Beginner as a as a pro, as a mixed martial artist is victorious. I'm sure tomorrow or next week he'll be cheering on his former student as he is victorious here tonight. Seliman taking on La Loba. Now this was a dangerous spot in the fight right there. Terry's head pinned in their butt, snaps it out, and uh, hey, a submission escape and a victory on top. And hey, two tough combatants and another great fight tonight here at Combate Global. All the fights here have been very exciting this evening. Rodolfo Roman in from Mark Spiretos, joined by Martin Rooney, Arthur, personal trainer and trainer of the mixed martial arts, the godfather, a dear Terry, victorious. Ranking gods are looking at him. Here we go, beautiful shot. Collins Avenue in Miami Beach. Great weather when the appropriate time, although this time around we've had a lot of, a lot of rain. But it's okay, once we get to the uh, our so-called winter, it's, it's very beautiful. I call it so-called because we need... <laughs> I think you had to go back to the 70s when we had uh, a little bit of snow, but 70 something I think it was. Claudia Zamora, Liz Phillips, a veteran. She's making her debut in La Jaula. The last time we saw Zamora in combate 
back in 2019. But let's go to the official introduction to La Voz, Stupe Contreras. Entrando a la jaula, Claudia Zamora. Claudia Zamora returning to action. She is coming fresh off a victory just a few months ago in May. She had a splendid career in the amateur levels being a champion, but she's taking on a veteran. But Claudia has a lot of power in those hands. Oh my gosh, and look at the legs too. So just very muscular. She prides herself on her strength, loves to throw hands. The Phoenix wants to rise tonight. As and she's go got now, her hands full with. As we go now, the introduction to her opponent. Su contraria, Elizabeth Phillips. Elizabeth Phillips walking in with a record of seven and eight. Wants to get back on that winning column as taking out some game names such as Raquel Pennington, Valier Latournor, a lady who has a lot of experience, but she wants that W. Oh yeah, fought in, you know, major organizations and hey 12 year veteran of mixed martial arts you don't see a lot of women with that kind of resume but tonight i'll tell you what zamora is hungry i've watched her fight and both these women like to strike but they go after it let's take a look here at the head to head la cara a cara 36 years old for both of these women the high five four compared to the five five of phillips the reach Slightly goes to Zamora with 68, 66 compared to 65. The way 135.4 for Zamora, 136 for Phillips. Should be a great fight to finish off a night full of mucho mas acción as we go to Lupe Contreras for the intro. Continuamos con mucha más acción. Tres vueltas, división peso gallo. We continue with much more action. Three rounds in the Bantamweight division. Los jueces son, the judges are, James Lázaro, Lorenzo Toledo, and Mark Streisand. Presentando la esquina azul, presenting the blue corner. Vestida de negro con rojo, wearing black with red. Su peso oficial, 135 libras y media. Her official weight, 135 and one half pounds. Con record profesional. De cuatro victorias y tres derrotas with a pro record of four victories against three losses. Fighting out of Miami, Florida, Claudia, the Phoenix Zamora. En la esquina roja, vestida de azul in the red corner, wearing blue. Su peso oficial, 136 libras, her official weight, 136 pounds. En 15 combates, tiene un record de 7 victorias y 8 derrotas. In 15 pro bouts, she maintains a record of 7 victories against 8 losses. Fighting out of Spokane, Washington, the monarch, Elizabeth Phillips. El referee, Alana Vélez. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. If you want to touch him up, go ahead, come out, fight. Alan Abel is the third man in La Jaula. Claudia Zamora out of Miami, Florida. Liz Phillips, Washington. Two ladies to conclude tonight's awesome fight card that we've had. And remember, next week, big main event La Loma versus Sally Man. Two women. In the main event, lots of bad blood. But Zamora and Phillips, Martin, two well-versed ladies. Well, they both traded some kicks. They're feeling each other out right now. Both shins have got to be feeling it. Phillips taking the center of the ring. Phillips training out of the Warrior Camp in Washington. I think we're going to see a lot of kicks tonight where both women pretty comfortable with that and throwing throwing hard. Claudia Zamora returns to the Jaula. Her husband, it, it's fighting is in her blood. Her, her, her boyfriend, Alan Arzeno, well-known fighter in South Florida as a mixed martial artist, has now transitioned into bare knuckle boxing. And she, she's a mom of two. And, uh, you know, some of her kids, they're, they're at the gym watching her mom compete. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Very motivated. 
I'll tell you what, those kids, <laughs> I'm pretty sure those kids probably stay in line. But man, both women very comfortable with their kicks right now. They've got good high guards held up, protecting themselves. But man, we got both ladies throwing with bad, bad intentions tonight. Yeah, the more training out of the Freedom Fighters. And Phillips, man, she has a great tell. To say here, she uh, adopted her nephew. Her nephew's now eight years old, but he adopted him. At six months, she says, listen, it, it just happened, and I had to take the lead. Such a great story from this young lady, competing inside La Jaula for the first time. She says she has that strong Muay Thai background, had her fair share in other promotions, taking on some top names. And now she's coming in here, showing, displaying what she's all about, wants to get back in the winning column. She last competed in June of 2021, coming off a unanimous decision defeat. Prior to that, a split decision defeat. So she took a little break now to focus on her personal life. She does have a degree in public administration, but now is into social work. So this woman right here, the jack of all trades, man. Yeah, helping a lot of people, but right now she's helped herself to the center of La Jaula. She's got a really quick left front kick, as well as, man, throwing a really fast right cross. But right now, very evenly matched fight. Both women have landed significant strikes. I don't know if we're gonna see this one go to the ground today. So it's gonna be who does the most damage, who stays the freshest. Phillips has said credits her mindset coach for changing her fighting life and personal life. As far as preparation has helped her a lot. She says she's really looked into herself to appreciate, have gratitude for herself, writes about what she can improve on a daily basis. And, and, and Mar, you're, you're, you're an author. You know how important writing is, especially if you're a fighter, to look back at your previous fights or, or in your training or in your daily life and how much of that motivation fits into your fight game. Absolutely. Uh, you know, whether you want to call it journaling, it can be a form of meditation, but the writing helps you to express things and you know, can be very therapeutic, which Phillips talked about that, you know, uh, you know, today. So, but it's pretty, uh, you know, I guess the irony is here are these, these women that, you know, are here fighting in the cage, but then talking about, <laughs> talking about calming themselves down, where I don't think you can be any more excited than, or focused than when somebody's throwing leather at your face. Well. I'm sure the children of both these women. Oh, great axe kick there from Dunmore. Yeah, we're seeing it. Like I said, I thought, you know, you could see they're establishing themselves with the kicks. And every time, even blocking that with your forearms, that's, man, it, it's a lot of punishment where both women have thrown, I would want to say, an equal amount of kicks tonight. So very difficult round. With 30 seconds left, I don't know how the judges call this one. Ooh, great inside kick. Yeah. I said that left kick. That, oh. I tell you, last time I got hit with that one, Martin, <laughs> knocked my wind out. I saw stars. Well, I'll tell you what, she's been active in that last 10 seconds. Could have swayed the judges. We so get ready here to the final seconds of the first round. Claudia Zamora out of Miami, Florida. And Martin, yes. break down the first round. So both women came out, and as you can see, throwing kicks exchanging them back and forth. That's what we pretty much saw. And man, kicks to the body, kicks to the legs. Both women's forearms took a lot of punishment in that round. And uh, I think the judges are gonna be hard pressed, but that spinning back kick landed by Zamora had to sway him. She might've won herself the round with that kick. Well, we're about to find out who won that round as we go into the second chapter of this bout. Zamora, Phillips, second round. 
I would definitely say Phillips looked the more relaxed coming into this round where Zamora breathing a little heavy, so we're gonna see if that has any effect on it. But man, that fast right cross. Zamora's gotta watch out if Phillips can line that up. We're heading now into this second round. Green end of action so far. Here in Paramount Plus. And we saw in that corner, Zamora's coach was, you know, you know, uh, indicating for her to throw more hands, and it looks like she is right now, where they were trading kicks in the first round. And look, both women now throwing some hands. Oh, but those big kicks. Zamora has an interesting story as she got involved into mixed martial arts. She had a very successful career in Taekwondo. She had the black belt, competed in several countries. Then she got injured. Now we got the open scoring there. Right ahead of Claudia Zamora. Yeah, so the judges saw it for Zamora. She might have taken it with that exciting couple of kicks at the end of the round. And hey, now Phillips has to make something happen here to even it out in round two. But I think Zamora has been more active. Phillips looking more relaxed, but not throwing is not how you win a fight. Well, that activeness from Zamora when it goes to that background that she had in Taekwondo. And as I was saying, Martin, she injured herself, never got surgery for it. So she decided to get into the weightlifting. She got very strong. Then her boyfriend, Al Lerzano, a mixed martial artist, pretty much inspired her. And now that's all she wrote. She's a mixed martial artist, a pro, has had much success. Returning to La Haula again. Well, and you can see that the amount of muscle that she's carrying, hey, she's gonna throw with power, but that costs energy. And definitely, you can see she's, you know, that she's definitely breathing heavy, but I don't think she's not gonna have the energy to continue and last this fight. But who's gonna land the more significant stuff? And again, this round, Zamora, I think, has landed more, but Man, again, another really close, tough one to call for the judges with half of this round to go. Mario, you, you train some of the best of the best in the world of mixed martial arts, and when it comes to muscle, you mentioned that the more muscle you have, you know, the oxygen levels that you get to the latter part of the fight kind of comes down to. As a trainer, how do you adjust or evaluate your fighter's trainer so that won't be an issue? Still have the same strength, but have the cardio levels. How do you keep it at par? Well, hey, sometimes it's interesting that it can be a little bit genetic, where some guys just have a natural gas tank, some don't. But it's looking at strengths and weaknesses and what you have to really work on. If a guy doesn't have the strength, Maybe you work there, and if cardio is an issue, that might be something that you really uh, go after in your camp. But for the most part, to be a complete fighter today, and like all the fighters we've seen tonight, you gotta have both. You gotta be strong, you gotta have cardio. You gotta have ground game, and we're about to see some right here. Speaking of ground game, Ken Phillips keep her down. Great takedown by Phillips. As she reached in for that takedown and swept her. Demora, oh, and now Demora giving her back up. though. Oh, but back up on the feet, and see, that's where the strength comes in. See, to keep her down, gonna be very, very difficult. She's back up on the feet where she's comfortable. But Phillips, getting that takedown, that can influence things. The corner of Zamora telling her to work that mid-range area, the body. Oh, great low kick to Phillips, she didn't, she semi-checked that one. <laughs> I think she and then she counter, and then countered with a nice right. But right now, obviously the pace has slowed a little bit. Zamora again, taking those big deep breaths. Breathing techniques with so essential, Martin. Yeah, and 40 seconds left. Again, it could be who's most active right here that could win that round again. Honoring, protecting yourself. Phillips, vet in this fight. Yeah, so much experience. She looks really relaxed in there. Hands are held really nice and high, protecting herself and lining up again that fast right. She zips it in there. But 10 seconds left. This is where it'd be a great time to flurry. Great striking from the more there to finish off the kick landing as we get ready for the last five minutes of this bout.
So right there, we saw again, Phillips throwing some strikes, but Zamora not backing down. Both women very active in that round. And again, Phillips landing that straight right, finding a home on the chin of Zamora, but Zamora throwing those big kicks, big act kick right there too. And at the end of the round, again, more active, but that takedown, what do the judges think of it, even though she couldn't keep the stronger fighter down? Well, much to see here left. Who will win it? We'll find out, they got five minutes to go. Well, looking at that shot from Zamora, she's definitely been attacked very often by Phillips. And that is a look of sheer determination where I don't think we're gonna see any quit in her, but I know she's feeling it right now. Well, she's definitely ahead in that first round. We're about to find out how she did in the second. Is she ahead? Yeah, and if she took that, if she took that round, then Phillips is gonna have to do something really big with either a knockout or some type of submission. Those kicks uh, for Zamora, though, they've been the story that's just so very effective. Not afraid to take chances with the kicks. I've seen some axe kicks, side kicks, low kicks, calf kicks. Yeah, well, you know, she's comfortable with that, with that background that you talked about. And, man, see, kicks Another like right that, there. they score with the judges, right? It, it, it sways you over where you're remembering, man, explosive movements, who's landing significant strikes, and Zamora has just brought the nonstop pressure like that. Great one-two combination for Zamora, following it up by a kick. Phillips, though, she has her fair share of low kicks as well. She has to be careful, though. Kind of low there. Great teep. Yeah, Phillips has been very relaxed, yeah. zoning in, picking her shots like that. But the thing is, in the meantime, Zamora is scoring over and over. And rightfully so. You're looking at it right there on your screen. Zamora up ahead. Yeah, so right now we've got three minutes and 30 seconds for Phillips to either start unloading and go for broke or Zamora is going to take this one. And again, I don't think Zamora's backing up. She's going forward right now. Zamora's no quit in her. She wants to end this fight. She's controlling herself, patient. Offense is there with those kicks. Freedom fighters, we've seen several fighters that have competed here in La Jaula. They've been very successful. Zamora could be added to that list. And Zamora, hey, she's winning this fight, but she's she's marked up. You see that mark on her nose right now? Because again, Phillips has landed. She's landed kicks and punches too. It's just Zamora has done Mora tonight. Now there's no doubt. There's has a lot of dent in the head or in the face. Phillips. You know, every time it, it always gets me when when you see the kick and they try to grab the leg. It's such a dangerous position because you can easily get hit with a right because you're so busy you put your hand down. Well, and if you show and that's a tell yeah. and you're putting your hand down, that's when they fake the low kick and go with the high kick. But again, right now, these women are going for it. They're throwing everything back and forth. Less than well, about two minutes and change to go. Both ladies got the message that we got two minutes to win this thing. Let's the start moving. The slogan is mucho más acción, much more Whoa. action. Takedown by Phillips. Phillips, another takedown. That's the second tonight. But Zamora, the power in those legs. Let's see if she can keep her down, which I think is, yeah, going to be difficult. Phillips now in the clinch again. Zamora flipping around. Yeah, Zamora, a strong fighter. Look at her, just turn her and put her back to the... Now we're back up. But again, Phillips bringing the action right there. Well, Phillips wants to win this one. She has to pull up something. She is down in the cards. Minute 30 to go. Submission or TKO or KO is what's gonna win it for her if she wants to get that victory. Both women have expended a lot of energy. Zamora just keeps throwing. Zamora leading with that jab. Phillips. Those kicks have worked for her all night. This would be the time to throw another one. The lead leg is available for Zamora to attack. Now Phillips, though, she throws in her fair shot of kicks. Less than a minute to go to wrap up this bout. Yeah, Phillips has got to 
do something right here. Start either throwing with a flurry and really go for it. Again, we invite you next Saturday, Combate Global. We're on a Saturday, not Friday. La Loba versus Selly, man. Big main event. Be part of history. Great action there by Zamora. Be part of history, folks. It could be the most watched women's MMA fight in the history. Don't want to miss that one. Now, if you want to see a fight that's got some bad blood behind it between two people that are serious, that is the one. As we are wrapping up this one, 15 seconds to go, and I think Zamora took it. Zamora, about 10 seconds to go. And they're throwing everything. Phillips exchanging back and forth. Will Zamora take it? We're about to find out. Zamora and Phillips. Great action for both these women as we await the result. Who took this fight? Who won it? La Voz, Stupid Contreras has the answer. El juez Lázaro anotó 30 a 27. Judge Lázaro scores it 30 to 27. Y los jueces Toledo y Streisand entregan tarjetas idénticas de 29 a 28. Judges Toledo and Streisand turn in identical scores of 29 to 28. All in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. Los tres a favor de la vencedora por decisión unánime. The Phoenix, Claudia Zamora. I get a kick every time I know Ray is the coach of the Freedom Fighters. Every time his fighter wins, man, it just shows how much he respects and enjoys training those fighters. Claudia Zamora, victorious tonight against the seasoned veteran Liz Phillips. You gotta say, Martin, that's a great victory. Just take a look at the stats. Yeah. 94 punches thrown by Zamora compared to 134. But if you really take this down here, the takedowns advantage goes to Phillips, but the strikes, I, Zamora was the one that was the matter with the striking. She yeah. connected. Yeah, she seemed more active. I think that's what won it for her. But hey, you could see the dismay or the disbelief of Phillips. Thought she, th she won that one. And uh, hey, when you look at the stats, sometimes the stats don't say the whole story where Zamora was more active and more active maybe at times when it counted to influence the judges. You could throw a hundred of them, but a hundred of them, which one connected? That's what matters. Here it is, the big, huge main event, La Lova versus Sally, man. The bad blood would be put to an end. Who takes this fight? Lots of heat. The beef will come to an end. Sally, man, La Lova, the fan favorite. Great stuff. Juliana Pena will be joining us too as well. We saw La Han taking on Chile. Jose Ferrer victorious. Zamora Phillips. Great action from these two ladies going toe to toe. Man. Rodolfo Roman for Martin Rooney. Arar Zeno. Everyone in the crew of Combate Live will catch you next week. Good night. Cheers, everyone. <laughs>